Hello everyone. Welcome to my lecture on Unit 3, Theory of Production and Cost Analysis, of which Topic 1 is Production Function. Basically in economics, the theory of production is a study of how businesses decide how much of a product to produce and how to use the resources required to make it, or how much volume of each input is required or needed for a given amount of output. The production function provides information to all such questions. That is, production function is a technical relationship between input and output. It shows how much how much output can be produced with a given set of inputs. The inputs of any production are land, labor, capital and organize, so organization and technology. Mathematically, the relationship between input and output can be expressed as Q is equal to F of L1, L2, C, O as well as T. Here L1 is referred as land, one of the inputs. L2 is referred to labor, C is referred to capital, O is referred to organization and, and T is referred to technology. So these are all uh, these are all the basic fundamental inputs that are required for any production activities conducted by a taken up by the businesses. Now coming up the next topic is production function with one variable input or it is also known as law of variable proportions, law of returns or law of diminishing returns. It is a model which illustrates how the businesses decide what to produce in response to demand when only one input can be changed. Business, businesses in its initial stages or on trial and error basis tries to slowly increase the production in tune with the existing demand for the products by increasing its resource uh, resources that is only one by changing one resource at that instance so here in the initial stage at an uh, the, when one factor is varied and all factors are kept constant then the total output increases this is a definition of law of returns to state and initial stages the rate of increase in the production will be high and after reaching a certain level of output it remains constant if more and more doses of variable factors are added the output will start declining this is the basic essence of this particular law that is law of returns so this law is also called as law of variable proportions or diminishing returns to scale or returns this law is universal nature in nature and proved to be true in agricultural and industrial sectors. Now this is a schedule which helps us to understand the concept of the short term production function or law of variable proportions. Right? With this schedule is a graph generate, uh, the, the graph represent uh, will be generated with the uh, values plotted on a graph. Now we'll take up a brief analysis of this particular theory using this data provided to us. Now there, this is we called it as a, a schedule or a data which representing number of units in the first column, second column total output production, marginal production and as well as average production. These are only a um, figures which are taken as for our study purpose they are not they're not fixed as such so let us uh, uh, look into the first unit of labor zero when zero input of labor is there obviously the total uh, there will be a no output no marginal output no product uh, no average output right now if we increase start increasing the production introducing one unit of labor with one unit of labor the total production will be will be uh, up to 10 units 10 units 
marginal product will be 10 as well as average product will be 10. Now before we proceed to the further analysis of the figures in this data, let me give you a how you calculate this total tower, total product. Total product is nothing but the resulting value, the total output a firm producing with a given set of input. Right? Now marginal product will be, there is a formula given to you here. Total product of nth item minus total product of n minus 1 item. Now here, Now this is T, T of N, this is T of TP, sorry, TP, N, this is N minus 1. So marginal product would be, this is a formula for the marginal product here given here, T, P, N minus Tp n minus 1 that is this figure this figure minus the previous one will be your 10 minus 0 is 10 this is a marginal product right average product is the total product divided by The total product divided by number of units. That is how the average product is calculated. Now if we see this, the second, uh, the, let us see when units of labor is 3, the total product is 33 and the marginal product is 11. That is 11, how did we get this 11? This is Tn, Tn minus Tn minus 1 that is 33 minus 22 is nothing but your 11. Okay. And this average product is the total product divided by the total product divided by number of units is 11. Right. So these are, these are how uh, all the values are calculated and uh, given to you here. Now if you observe this one. The first stage, that is, these two aspects, when the labor units are 0 and 1, there is a drastic increase in the total, uh, total production as well as average production observed, that is 0 to 10 units, right? Now, this, there, from here, from this stage to this stage, there is a constant increase in the average product, even though when the input factors are increased right so that we call it as a constant returns this is the previous one is increasing returns and the next constant returns and this we call it as a decreasing returns constant returns increasing returns so this stage is even though if you, you are observing increase in the input factors you are not, we are, we are not able to, uh, uh, that is, there is no significant change in the output how we have observed in the initial stage. So, that after a certain point, it starts declining. We call, that is why it is referred as a decreasing returns or diminishing returns. The same thing, when it's plotted in the graph, it gives you the curves like this. This curve is TP, total product. This curve representing AP, that is average product. And this is MP, marginal product. Now, these are the stages that is that are um, identified for increasing returns, constant returns and decreasing returns. Decreasing returns. Now, here in stage 1, in stage 1 in the above diagram, Tp is increasing, Tp that is this this is increasing at a higher, um, I mean it is increasing rate 
or at a faster rate than MP that is the uh, next curve that is MP curve just below the TP curve it is MP curve that is so the TP curve is raising faster than the MP curve and at one point S is equal to S is equal to here AP is equal to MP. AP is equal to MP at point S. That is, uh, this point of intersection is of both the average product curve as well as the marginal product curve. This is S. Right? Now, with this point of intersection, extend the line up to the with uh, touching the uh, total product curve and uh, dropping to the x-axis right and we are representing this point on the x-axis as n on further increasing in the input the total product curve starts increasing that indicates the second stage right now in this second stage the total product will at point becomes a constant and AP starts declining, that is average product curve does, starts declining and MP falls more faster than AP. MP is going beyond or below the uh, AP line, that is average product line, right? And at point M, at point M, it is the end of constant returns. At this point M, because it is touching the x-axis here that is a stop um, uh, end of the constant returns and in stage 3 the MP becomes negative and TP and AP starts declining uh, declining right so if we observe right from the first stage that is output increases to point F the output increases to point F here and when more inputs of labors are increased output increased further and at a declining rate till it reaches the maximum point H. This is the max point, maximum point at H. After H, the total output declines and the marginal product of labor MP is negative here. Now this here, it is MP is negative, which indicates that additional units of labor are not contributing any for anything positively to the total output. Even if labor is increased further, it is not worth using it. The same thing is given here again. The total, uh, with the explanation part, the total product represents, the uh, TP represents total product and it is nothing but the total, uh, sum of total output produced by the variable factor. And AP represents average product it is uh, the total product divided by number of units give, give AP. It also increases in the beginning, but at a slower rate than the TP. Marginal rep product represents a change in the total output, change in the output due to addition of one unit of variable factor. Right? That is how the formula also have given you, that is TPN. Tp of n minus Tp of n minus one item is will be your marginal product. So the stage one, stage two, stage three, with all the relevant how the Tp, Tp, Ap and Mp will be operating and its um, cutting of x-axis, um, cutting of x-axis at what instant, indicating the uh, well, end of constant returns when MP um, is intersecting or touching the x-axis that is an indication that is how when it occurs in the second stage and the st third stage will be about your declining return uh, de uh, decreasing returns right that is if further doses of labor are added the MP becomes negative and TPAP will be showing decreasing results or returns with this, I'll end up the session here. Thank you.